are watching T Radio V, Radio in TV. The Social Action Media Network and T Radio V present Creating Good Work Live with your hosts, Ron Schultz and Greg Franks. Welcome to Creating Good Work Live, uh, where week in and week out we. Uh, are dedicated to bringing you the finest in social innovators and social entrepreneurs, uh, solving many of our most pressing issue, social issues. I'm Ron Schultz. And I'm Greg Franks. And uh, we're very excited today about uh, introducing a, a, a bit of a format change. Um, in anticipation of Creating Good work, uh, work Live moving from its home here at uh, T Radio V over to uh, our new home at calgov.tv network. Uh, which is launching here at the Zina uh, Studios in October. Uh, we are shifting to a 30-minute format, uh, which will f allow us to focus with on just one guest per show, which is great. And today that first guest is, uh, is Brian McMahon, uh, host of the Expert Dojo show here at T Radio V. And uh, Brian was the founder and CEO of Play It Forward Labs and is now officially the head honcho at the Expert Dojo, which specializes in helping startup uh, entrepreneurs uh, become more successful. Uh, the Expert Dojo describes itself as the world's largest peer-to-peer -peer peak performance academy. And uh, Brian and I first met uh, at one of the um, Pay It Forward, one of the first uh, Pay It Forward events in Santa Monica, where we introduced Creating Good Work. Yeah. Uh, at that, it was, a, it was a great event, it was really amazing. And, um, and then Brian also introduced me uh, to the T Radio V family, where uh, we quickly joined on. And so we're very pleased to have you with us today, Brian. Thanks. Yes. I feel like we should have a group hug. Yeah, actually, group, actually, group actually, hug. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get you to. I'm going to get you to come to my house sometime, so you can introduce me like that to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> she thinks I'm nothing. Yeah. So <laughs> well, <laughs> that's not what Ron thinks. No. You should talk to her. <laughs> so. Uh, um, well, let's begin with uh, Pay It Forward. Yeah. Uh, tell us about the events and the impact that they had and what you saw come from that experience. So it was born out of a, a problem that faces entrepreneurs, early stage entrepreneurs. I, and, I've, and maybe to put it into context, I've lived in 40, maybe 35, 40 countries. Mm -hmm. And in those countries, I've had businesses in many of those places and learned some things as I went from place to place. And one of the things that really shocked me when I arrived in Los Angeles is the incredibly high failure rate of entrepreneurs, uh, especially very, very early stage entrepreneurs. It really, it really surprised me, not so much that 97 out of every 100 entrepreneurs who start their business fail, but it, it surprised me that, and I don't want to say nobody seemed to care, but maybe nobody seemed to notice such an incredibly high, scary statistic of so many people losing their, their homes and their families and everything that goes with failure within entrepreneurship. So as I looked around and I looked at all of the entrepreneurs, I, I realized that you had these tens if not hundreds of thousands of entrepreneurs all marching alone. And we all know that whatever we want to achieve in life, we, we achieve more by all ships rising with a rising tide. So if we all work together, we do it better. So it was a really loose concept at the beginning. And the idea was, if we bring together all of the entrepreneurs in the area, and just for an evening, we entertain the thought that by giving first, but by everybody giving first, then we would create a sea of five, 600 people giving in the form of mentorship. Well, having moved in that direction, what, wh how did you, what led you to the founding of, of your expert dojo? That seems to be something interesting that I wasn't familiar with, mm. but I certainly would love to hear about mm. that. And then the space, this incredible space that you had in Santa, have in Santa Monica. Yeah, it, it all flows from the same stream. I, I think sometimes consciously and sometimes subconsciously, we all go into our stream in life. And that stream will take us in the places that the stream is going to go. And if we want to do something different, we need to get out of that stream and we need to step into another one. So when I stepped into the pay it forward stream at the beginning when I got here, I built these phenomenal relationships, like amazing relationships. And people like Ron and other great leaders in the, in the industry who said, look, you know, there's some good people here. We want to help. We want to do some really good things. And as I formed those relationships, what happened was my stream became bigger and it became more powerful. 
And then we realized that, and I say we, it's really funny, back at that time it was just me, um, but I realized at that time mentorship is really powerful and helping people is really powerful and it's not just a one-way street. When you do give, you get so much back in return. You find out who your real friends are, you find out who are the people that you want to be surrounded with in life in a very simple and direct way. You find out who are the really great people who can impact the community and you really find in, in some way your space, like how it is that you, or I in this case, as a human being, can make my small impact on the world in a positive way. So the bigger the mentorship got, the more I realized, wow, actually we need more than just a little bit of mentorship, we need some coaching. So people would step up, uh, and we had phenomenal people come to the events. We actually had the guy who produced the movie, Pay It Forward. I don't know if you saw the movie mm -hmm. in the early 90s. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful movie, little boy, does amazing things, pays it forward, it reverberates everywhere and then it comes back to him in the end. And the guy who produced the movie lives around the corner from where we were doing the events. And he just came up one day and he said, look, you know, this is, <laughs> this is great. He said, do you need anyone to volunteer on the front desk for, <laughs> for check-in? <laughs> and, and, and that was what we created. We created all these amazing people like him and Ron and me and mentors and investment people who all just came and said, hey, we want to help. So we, we started transferring it into coaching and said, we want to help people with coaching and we want to help people become stronger. And then more relationships got built and the stream got bigger. And then I got really involved in the Chamber of Commerce because they wanted to get more involved in startup and the Chamber of Commerce then made our stream bigger. And that's the key here is in life, there is no immediacy, but there is immediacy if you have the patience to let it happen. If you just follow the breadcrumbs to where it's gonna go to and have the patience to allow for it to get there, then you see this incredible direct line which is faster yeah. than anything you could do. You, and mostly you see that looking back. I mean, yeah. continuity yeah. is certainly only observable when you look b behind you. Yeah. You don't see it necessarily going forward. But, totally. but before, before we start talking about the offerings at the Expert Dojo, mm -hmm. you, you said something really interesting in the, in the TEDx um, presentation that you gave, which I thought was very good, um, which was about the notion of the injustice of the entrepreneurial startup system. Yeah. And I wonder if you could talk a little bit about that, and yeah. and and how how you how you walk you know if you can walk us through that. Yeah. So I, I I'm a great study. That's that's mm -hmm. what I do. I I find amazing people, and I study and I ask questions and I ask more and more and more and I take in everything I can and I, and I try and learn from that. And I just couldn't get my head around the fact that even giving the mentoring and even giving the coaching, this, the failure rate was still so incredibly mm -hmm. high. It just it seemed it seemed really strange to me. And as I went through the Chamber of Commerce, they introduced me to the Santa Monica Mall, which is the obviously the beautiful shopping center in Santa Monica. And then they paid it forward. And they said, we're going to rent you some space, mm -hmm. which we would normally reserve for a huge global Fortune 500 company, like our partner. You, you, you know the people in the mall, like Michael Kors mm -hmm. and Armani and Tiffany right. and just there, right? They're not. Cheesecake they're Factory. And then there's <laughs> Expert Dojo. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, you know, we, we love what you're doing in the community and we love how you're impacting the startup community. And we don't see how this fits exactly in with what we do, but we want to try mm -hmm. because you're trying. And again, this is the breadcrumbs looking backwards. It's a straight line. So mm -hmm. we got into the space and then all these partners said, we want to help because we can see there's something good happening. So furniture companies giving us deals you wouldn't believe, Best mm -hmm. Buy giving us deals you wouldn't believe, Stay, like everybody chipping in, not for charity. Nobody gives for charity. And we paid for many of these things, but just not the price you'd normally pay. This is all about a movement, a cause, mm -hmm. with a lot of good people being given the opportunity to step up. So in answer to your question, I then took that space and for the first six months, I studied entrepreneurs. I said to entrepreneurs, I want you to come in for free. We're getting a good deal in the mall. We'll do some one-on-one -on -one coaching, which will make sure that we can pay the bills and we can keep everything going. But everybody else in the community, you can come in for free. The only rule is that if you're gonna come in, you have to come in with a mindset of giving. So if we have an entrepreneur who needs help with a crowdfunding campaign, or they need help with investment, or they need help with marketing or branding, or, or any one of the 5,000 things you need to know to be an entrepreneur, then you gotta help. And if mm -hmm. you don't help, then you're not welcome here because you're not prepared to give the currency to the community. So it's a beautiful, different type of currency. I, I call it a pay it forward, but really it was just using all of the currencies that we all have mm -hmm. internally. And during that six months, I studied entrepreneurship more, I studied the reasons for failure, and I found out that Nobody really taught us how to be entrepreneurs mm -hmm. in school. 
We didn't get trained. We didn't get educated. We, we, we have to go out of the world and we have to learn. And sure, if you're 20 or if you're 19, maybe that's not so bad. But if you're in your 40s like I am, then that learning lesson is a really expensive lesson. So I came to a place of not having all of the answers as to why people failed, but at least understanding the questions yeah. as to why people were failing. And one of those questions is just the unfairness of the system. Yeah. Well, I want to come back to that. We, we have to take a break here. Uh, My Health Lie Times when you're having fun. No. And so we're going to take a, a short break, break, and we'll be back in uh, just about 90 seconds. Yay. We'll be right back with more Creating Good Work Live. The real question that needs to be asked, as well as answered, is what is it that we can do that is unique, that is impactful? I'm Estella Pfeiffer. This is my brilliant bus. We are going to empower every individual and every organization to do more and achieve more. I had an idea, a bus that brings technology to kids that need it most. But I look in the mirror. When I look in the mirror, what do I see? What do I see? A brilliant mind. A brilliant mind. Looking back at me. It's this process of continuous renewal, of showing courage in the face of reality. If you dream big enough and believe in your dreams, you can make it happen. Showing that courage in the face of opportunity. Open your eyes. Los Angeles is one of the top destination cities for human trafficking. If you see something, say something. Call CAST. Your call remains anonymous. Interpreters available. Human trafficking is all around us. Open your eyes and let them lift theirs. Welcome back to Creating Good Work Live on T Radio V. And we're back. And I, uh, we're here with uh, Brian McMahon from the Expert Dojo. And I, I want to return, Brian, to this whole notion of the, of, the in, of the injustice that we see within the um, entrepreneurial system, if you can go into that. Yeah, I'd love to. Uh, the, the whole idea, I, when I did the TEDx talk you were, you were referring to, it, it, it brought me back to when I was a boy. 40 years ago, and, and I had heard about the American dream and found out about the American dream, and for me, it was the ability that anybody was able to do anything they wanted to do as long as they were willing to work hard enough. That was the idea, and that's when, when our forefathers came here and everybody arrived here and everything that mm. I'm really proud of about it. And, and what really shocked me was how can that be possible if we have so many incredibly talented entrepreneurs who are starting businesses and they're failing, like great businesses, great concepts, good ideas, really good implementers, but they're failing. And then I started to study the companies that were succeeding. And what I found out was that there was a, and when I say incredibly high majority, I'm talking high 90% of Ivy League, white, 20-something year old boys whose mommies and daddies all were related in some way to venture capital or funding. And it's just, it's just kind of sad. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not sad that there's unfairness in the world, right? We've been around for a while, so mm -hmm. I, I get it. But it's just sad that there's so much unfairness in an area of such incredible yeah. creativity and importance that if we look at the way the deck is stacked, the top 10, 15 companies in the world are all the, 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 the group of people I just said. Even if we look at the Fortune 500 companies, how many women CEOs, how many black CEOs, how many... Irish CEOs, right? <laughs> 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 I feel like I should include Irish. Nah, no, 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 it's no, just, no, it's, no. it's just, it's wrong. It's one small club. Right. And what's scaring me is that this club is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And when you look at some of the areas that we're in, I'm not even talking about poor areas. Right. I'm talking about middle class areas, which is the new poor. Mm -hmm. That you look at these areas. It's so incredibly difficult for them to be successful. Well, I want to get into this, this, some of the social aspects later on because this is about social innovation, and I think what you're doing is really important in that regard. But I, I also want to talk, too, a little bit about, um, about entrepreneurship and um, how with an entrepreneurial startup, uh, change and flexibility and, and adaptation are absolutely crucial 
to, to making this happen. And, and I'd love to hear how you describe how you've taken the expert dojo, which started out from this uh, um, pay it forward perspective. In a bar. In right. a bar. <laughs> <laughs> Ironically for an Irish I, ironic. guy. <laughs> no, it's not too ironic. The, uh, <laughs> but how you took it from that to, to where it is now, how you changed your, your, in, uh, your, your concept, how you, how you molded it to make it what it is, and how that's a model for other entrepreneurs. Yeah, and we're opening in Vancouver next week, and we've never taken money from anyone. Everything we've done has been based on cash flow, and it's a very simple principle. My principles and the formula that we follow in Expert Dojo and the formula that we teach other people are the same principles that our dads had, mm -hmm. which are start by following the money. Make sure that you have a model which is actually going to get you the revenue that you need to be able to continue your model forward. Make that the first thing that you put in place. Now, if you have investment where you're getting users and you're a high-level app, it's slightly different, but the principle is still the same focus on what's going to come. And I'll give you a great example. So we had three levels in the dojo. First level was $1,500, one-on-one coaching. We bring coaches in. They work with clients a couple of hours a week. It works well. They get all of the unfairness of the dojo. Second one was $99, and third one was free. Now, you would think we would start on the $99 because there's no direct interaction involved. It's the best product. It's the most profitable by far. But I knew that if we started on the $99, we'd go bust. And mm -hmm. we'd go bust in a short period of time because we couldn't get enough in quickly enough based on the fact we didn't know anyone and couldn't spend any money in marketing. So we focused all of our attention on the 1500 We focused it on the product, which we knew was the least profitable, but was going to get us to be able to pay the overheads that we had as quickly as we could. And then after, it's not even a pivot, but it's then more of a focus on the $99 rather than the other one. So mm -hmm. my biggest advice to entrepreneurs everywhere is follow the money. I mean, make sure, and I build into it, if you can have an impact business, it's beautiful. If you can have it social businesses like I feel we have, man, you sleep well at night and you know you're doing good things in the world. Mm -hmm. But if you lead just with a social business and you don't have a way of getting revenue, you're just going to be the nicest poor guy yeah. on the side of the no, street. I absolutely agree. Hmm. I absolutely agree. What influences continue to be at the heart of your passion at this stage as you move forward? Oh, my, there's so many. My 10-year-old boy, who I would say every entrepreneur in Santa Monica knows, I try and keep him massively involved in the dojo. Mm -hmm. My wife, the entrepreneurs who really do it, those people who follow that, that hard road of saying, we're going to build something ourselves at the start. Whatever happens afterwards, you take funding when you're in a position of strength, that's okay. Mm -hmm. But at the beginning, you build something with your hands and you make it really powerful, really impactful. And I watch those people every day, and it's a privilege. I mean, I'm, I'm like you with the show here. I feel I'm so privileged because I get these amazing entrepreneurs who come in, and I get to learn from these people all the time. So it's new every week, but it's always the same type of person. Yeah. So uh, <coughs> I want to shift gears just a little bit here because I want to I talk about your relationship with Volunteers of America. And um, I will say they, they were a, a critical influence on creating good work, when I launched the Social Entrepreneur Incubator at Volunteers of America in 2003, yeah, and uh, and they've been really supportive of, of of how you bring this into the community, and how you bring these ideas uh, into these uh, areas that are challenged. Yeah, and so uh, what what kinds of opportunities are you are you developing with them now? So firstly, I love them as well. Volunteers mm -hmm. of America, Salesians, uh, Boys and Girls Club, phenomenal organizations that go into communities which are so challenged. Mm -hmm. And then they try and create something amazing, which is almost impossible in some of the areas that they try and do it in. And they never stop. Like you mm -hmm. talk about the greatest inspiration for entrepreneurs, those types of people who are in those areas doing what they're doing, they're the greatest Bob, Bob Pratt at Volunteers of America LA is, um, is singular. Yeah, uh, just an amazing person. So yeah. it was really interesting. So at the very beginning, we sat down, we had low of meetings we looked at how we could bring a a course and bring it in properly and then right at the start I realized we need to get the 1500s done for the one-on-one -on -one coaching and then we're going to come back and we're going to build a great because it, it was it was interesting at the beginning and I'm not sure if it was arrogance or if it was ego or if, or maybe it's just that we all want to save the world right mm -hmm. but after about two or three months even when you and I were talking mm -hmm. I said you well we're going to go out we're going to go to uh, Compton we're going to like solve all the problems in Compton and you're probably thinking okay yeah sure okay <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you I'll see you in four or mi five months so so the, a, a humility came with that afterwards which is it's wrong of us to try and launch something which isn't ready 
So I spent six months building a online and offline program that's really been thought through, not what we had initially, which was just wanting to help and put it through. Uh, we're about two weeks away from being ready with that. I want to launch it directly out there. I want to put it in the local community. It's a, it's a 14 week program. Six of the weeks are direct one on one conversations with people in funding, people in, in marketing, people in branding and other areas as well. And then when they get to the end of it, I want to get them involved in our investor festivals too. So you're in the process of uh, creating a fund that focuses on those that are left out. Is how is that going? Tell us about that. Really interesting. Again, the stream just keeps flowing in the right direction. So we got approached about four or five months ago, actually about two months ago, by an organization in Santa Monica who said that they wanted us to take on a 20,000 square foot facility. Uh, that facility will be an innovation space in Santa Monica. It will have a maker space in there. It will have a startup alley in there. It will have a crowdfunding space in there. It will have an entertainment space in there. It will have a revolution cafe in there. It will have everything in there. It will all be about celebrating the greatness that is early stage right. entrepreneurship here in LA. And uh, what I've done, we, we have to wait about two weeks or so until we get everything signed. The second it will be signed, I will be approaching 50 of the angels that I respect here in, in Los Angeles and giving them the opportunity to get involved, whereby they can actually get involved in a fund, and that fund is directly about taking innovation from everywhere and helping those companies move forward by giving them funding. Mm -hmm. How can individuals get in touch with you so that they can become more involved with your project? Brian at Expert Dojo. I, I read my emails till late in the evening. My wife loves it. Uh, so just, yeah, hit me up at any time. Anyone who wants to get involved in helping early stage entrepreneurs increase their success levels, whether it's to teach us, whether it's to learn from us or to be involved, yeah. is the f my favorite thing to do. Yeah, I think we have a contact card that we'll put up there as okay. well so that people can really can figure out where you are. So uh, let's, let's talk a little bit too about the, about the influence, about, about what separates the work at Expert Dojo from uh, other entrepreneurial uh, facilitators and startup supporters? Again, again, it's a really hard question because th th I don't think anybody wakes up in the morning and wants to do a bad job. Not us, mm -hmm. not anyone else. We all try and do our best. Mm -hmm. And then as we go through our journey, we all find out the little lessons that we have to make us better as we go along. There are some great institutions in Santa Monica. I think the problem that all of us have and what I really, really want to achieve here more than anything else is we're very fragmented. So as a startup, when you come into the community, it's incredibly hard to know who to go to, who to talk to, who's good, who's bad, who's going to take advantage of you, who's not going to take advantage of you. And it's a tough city. And it's not just LA, it's all of the other cities. Mm -hmm. So the more we get together, I suppose if I was going to say the one thing that I believe we're really missing that would really help is if we can do what other countries, even countries like Israel, do incredibly well, and that's to get our private sector community to really support our startup community. We have a big problem there. Yeah. We're trying to do it, other organizations are trying to do it as well. And if we can, if we can crack that particular problem, yeah. it'll be well uh, pretty it's special. It's not seeing, the, it's, it's not seeing that uh, entrepreneurial community as, as competition, but uh, seeing it as um, uh, bettering the, ec the economy for everyone. And, and the whole notion of the word competition, right? Competition doesn't mean strive against, it means strive with. Yeah. And so trying to get these, uh, all these different folks to in within the community to really uh, recognize that we're all working on this together and that there is an interdependence yeah. within our community. We, we can't, I mean, startups cannot become great on their own. And every single private corporation started as a startup. The challenge is, we're all in our own stream. So if your particular stream is, I'm a C-level executive in a corporate place, I just gotta pay my mortgage, I just gotta make sure that my family like me, I've just gotta make sure that I turn it into work at nine mm -hmm. o'clock in the morning. It's really hard to move out of that stream to a place of, there are hundreds of thousands of people that I can directly impact by giving nothing, but just by bringing innovation into my company. Well, we've been talking today here on Creating Good Work with uh, Brian McMahon at the, uh, the head honcho. Head honcho. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only, that's the only <laughs> benefit of the startup, right? You should get to give yourself the name. <laughs> that's the technical term, honcho, <laughs> at, uh, at the expert dojo. And uh, we're really pleased that you could come on today, yes. Brian, and, and, uh, and share not only your story, but, but share your, with, with that kind of generous spirit that you bring to this. And I, because I really appreciate that, and you know, you know you. I do, 
that, uh, that, that sense of generosity. And I think that if we, we all operated as our businesses from that sense that uh, we don't have to hold on to it, that we can be generous, then uh, a lot more is going to get done. Yeah, you've been doing this for many years, and, and our journey is short, just a couple of years, but it's got a long way to go. Yeah. So thanks a lot. And uh, we appreciate you all being here today for Creating Good Work Live. It's uh, our, f our, our first 30-minute show, Yay. and, <laughs> and yeah. we'll be uh, looking to f forward to seeing you uh, back again and again. And, and come visit the uh, CalGov TV and see what we're going to be doing. We're launching that new season October 24th. It should be very exciting, real dynamic shows all about local government entities. So Beautiful. thanks a lot. Thanks, Ron. And thank you for being our guest. It's my pleasure. This has been <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. Thanks. Yes. Creating Good Work Live is a production of the Social Action Media Network on T Radio V. Most anti-bullying efforts rely heavily on bystanders to take action, leaving your child with no protection. The No app aims to change that. Now your child can summon the assistance of a policewoman to tell the bully no, and you get alerted in real time with a map of your child's location. With video evidence, the bully's parents can be confronted, and school officials can be forced to take action. You get increased peace of mind, and your child gets increased self-confidence. Sustainable Law Group is a different type of law firm. Our clients are primarily social enterprises, nonprofits, and green businesses. Our mission is to provide legal counsel that is aligned with our clients' values by providing integrated, sustainable, and comprehensive solutions. We're a full service law firm. Starting a benefit corporation, cooperative, or nonprofit, the attorneys at the Sustainable Law Group are ready to support you in all stages of your business. Find out more about Sustainable Law Group at sustainablelawyer.com.